Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a comparison between the DJI Phantom 3 Standard and the Phantom 4 Pro version 2. Now, this video is mainly for those of you who currently own the Phantom 3 Standard and are wondering about an upgrade. However, if you own neither drone and are looking to pick one up, this video will work for you too. Now, from the start to end of this video, I'm going to be going over the most essential aspects of each drone narrowing down the differences to the ones that matter. All right, if that sounds good, let's get right into the comparison. Starting off, I'm going to be talking about price. So we're going to start off with the Phantom 3 Standard, which is currently offered for about $400 in most places. I say that because it's worth noting that DJI is no longer actually manufacturing or selling this drone as it was released quite some time ago. So to buy this one, you will have to find another source. On the other hand, the Phantom 4 Pro version 2 can be bought directly from DJI for $1,599. Um, clearly this is a huge price gap, but in my opinion it is justified, if only because of the massive diversity of features offered by the Phantom 4 Pro version 2. I'm going to be getting to those features shortly. Alright, moving on to part 2 of the comparison, I'm going to be talking about the weight. Now. This is an important factor because of portability. Um, I know for a fact walking long distances can really prove the importance of a lightweight drone. Um, so for the Phantom 3 standard, it weighs in at 2.68 pounds. Now, a little bit heavier at 3.03 pounds, the Phantom 4 Pro version 2 comes in roughly a quarter pound heavier. But in my opinion, it's not really a substantial difference and both drones have the same footprint uh, as you can see. So if you look at them from right up above here, they're roughly the same size. Obviously this one has bigger propellers, but as you know, those can come off. Okay, moving on to what I think of as sort of a subcategory, and that is the setup time. So this is not really a huge value point, but I figured it's worth mentioning anyway. Um, as for setup time, that being the time between you get it out of the bag and you get it up in the air, uh, it's roughly the same. However, I should also mention that this, the Phantom 4 Pro version 2, has a slightly modified propeller mounting system in which you cannot simply screw on and off the propellers like this. That comes off very quickly and easily. Uh, for this one, it's a little bit more complicated. You have to get it centered on the mounting system first, then turn them opposite ways and that will click it into place. Uh, it's more secure, but it takes a little bit longer. And in cold weather, when your hands are cold, it can be quite difficult, I have to say. But also in the cold, I found this one heats itself up faster, thus allowing you to get up into the air more quickly. So the next feature is flight time. And this is one of the most important things because the more time you have in the air, the more time you have to capture whatever you're trying to capture. So uh, they're about five minutes apart. The Phantom 4 Pro version 2 has roughly half an hour and the Phantom 3 standard over here has about 25 minutes. Not only is the battery significantly larger in this one. Here, let me show you uh, the difference here. So this is, this is quite a substantial battery. And over here we have the old battery. This is the size of the old battery. It's quite a lot smaller as you can see. And if I put them right next to each other, um, yes, the Phantom 3 standard battery is ever so slightly taller, but this one is about half as thick. And again, this way it's a little bit wider that way as well. In addition, we have a little bit of propeller modification. Looking at the new propellers here, they sort of have a, a, a nice sleek tip on the end, where looking at here, it's just sort of a, a blunt edge. And what this allows you to do is less drag on the propellers as they spin and thus wasting less battery power. Not to mention it's also quieter as DJI claims. And I would actually agree with them. This one could, could be quite a droning sound as you might figure with a drone. Uh, and this one is also, it's pretty loud, but it's a little bit quieter than this one. Now again, a rather brief but important point, uh, the top speed. This one in sport mode can reach 45 miles per hour. Uh, and this one in sport mode, or altitude mode, I think they called it back then, uh, is actually only 35 miles per hour. So both 
very fast. However, this one's a lot faster too. And if you're trying to chase a car or something, which I don't really recommend, uh, you're, more, you're more likely to be able to catch up with this one. All right, relating to the same category as speed, I'd like to talk about the transmission range. So with the Phantom 4 Pro version two, you have significantly larger antenna here. You have two that, by the way, you face towards the drone. You don't point it at it. You have the large side facing it. That's a new thing I learned recently. While with the Phantom 3 standard, you only have sort of this little antenna thing, which is rather sad in my opinion. So yeah, this is way better. Uh, it gets you about eight miles of transmission. And frankly, that's more than you need because by the time you manage to fly eight miles away, chances are that your battery is pretty low and you're gonna wanna be turning around pretty soon. So this has plenty of range. I found this one, the reception got sort of choppy around uh, 1,500 feet or so, uh, and that's maybe, I don't really know how many miles that is. But anyway, it's not very far. Um, but this one can get you a lot farther, and obviously this one wins in the distance category. Another category in which the Fanta 4 Pro version 2 emerges victorious is obstacle avoidance. So. If I turn this guy sideways, you'll see these uh, sort of black windows here. There's one there as well. Also in the back, you see those, this here and this here. Also, it can also see um, down as well. So, so that makes it five directions of obstacle sensing, forwards, backwards, both sides and down as well. Now, if we turn to check out the Phantom 3 standard, uh, there are no sensors on it at all. So if there's a tree ahead of you and you're flying into it, you're gonna hit the tree. Uh, but this one, if there's a tree, likely this will stop for you and you will not hit the tree. Another huge upside with the Phantom 4 Pro version two uh, are the intelligent features that it offers. So this offers what they call a follow me mode. And when you do that, the drone flies with the gimbal here and it keeps you in the frame. In addition, obstacle avoidance is engaged the entire time. However, on the Phantom 3 standard, this one has follow me as well, but it's not based off intelligent following, it's based off where the person holding the controller is. So instead of holding on to the actual figure of the person moving, it's only gonna follow the controller. So that means if you're trying to do anything athletic or just not hold a controller with you, it's not gonna work with this one. All right, moving on now to video quality, which is perhaps the most important feature that I'm going to talk about. The Phantom 4 Pro version two here offers 4K resolution at 60 frames per second, while the Phantom 3 standard offers a max of 2.7K. And at that, it is limited to 30 frames per second. So as for frames per second and resolution, we have a clear winner over here. In addition, I should mention the shutter situation. So the Phantom 3 standard has an electronic shutter, uh, while this one has a mechanical shutter. And in simplest terms, that's going to improve the amount of distortion that is not in your video. Imagine you have this drone flying along a road with telephone poles. So if you see this telephone pole here, and you see that one in there, as the drone flies along, uh, those telephone poles will continue to appear straight up and down. However, with the Phantom 3 standard, those telephone poles will start to get slanted uh, because the image is being captured at different times as the drone flies along. And that is the downside of an electronic shutter. All right, and the last point in my comparison is going to be build quality. So simply looking at these two drones, you can already tell that DJI has made a massive improvement with this one. Just looking at this plastic, you can see that the new drone has a very nice glossy look, which actually does not pick up fingerprints, which is worth mentioning. Uh, While well, this one is just simply a matted texture. Next, I'd like to point out how they did the gimbal situation down here. So if you look at this one, you basically have the bare minimum outside of the drone itself. You have the camera right here, and you also have the pivot. But look at this, ready? If I move this, 
it moves around inside of the drone. Now, moving on to look at the Phantom 3 standard, this entire stabling system is outside of the drone. So that means not only if you crash, you're more likely to break it off, um, but also when you're taking off, this is much more likely to pick up dust and you really don't want that inside of your camera or gimbal system. Okay, last point here as to build quality. Now, if you take a look at the Phantom 3 standard, you can see that the camera is only supported on one side. Now, if we move over to the Phantom 4 Pro version 2, you can see that the camera is supported on both sides by the gimbal mechanism. This will keep your camera a lot steadier. Thank you for sticking with me through this longer than usual video. Uh, and it's time for the final thoughts. So, as you saw during our comparison, the Phantom 4 Pro version 2, right here, is simply the better drone. Uh, and although it may be much more expensive, it will last you a much longer time into the future. Uh, and I say that because 4K 60 frames per second is relatively new in consumer level drones. Uh, when you get into Inspire and stuff, which are uh, fancier drones in DJI's lineup, although frankly not much better than this one. Um, those are professional drones and 4K has become a little bit outdated in that scene. But as for consumer drones, this is going to last you for a very long time, uh, likely into the next decade. So that's a lot to hope for in tech, but uh, I think this one has the longevity that will get you there. And overall, while the Phantom 3 standard over here is more affordable right now, um, the Phantom 4 Pro is going to be more affordable for you in the long run. That's because this one is capped out at 2.7K, uh, 30 frames per second, and that's just not simply good enough, frankly, for the future. I would say in, in five years or so, I think 4K is going to be fairly universal in every single drone just because that's what it is accepted now uh, and this one's just not going to last that long if we're not even considering the future this one will get you better quality right now as soon as you buy it all right everyone uh, i hope this video was helpful for you and i hope i've made your choice to upgrade or simply to buy the right drone for you now a little bit easier um, if you have any other questions for me that i did not cover in this video feel free to leave them below on that note, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.